Welcome again to another edition of Cherry Red Radio. I'm Ian McNay and I'm joined by my colleagues as always, Professor John Reed, Matt Ingham and our special yes expert, Umi. And as always, we're going to play you lots of very fine tunes for the next two hours. Mostly Cherry Red, but some that are not Cherry Red related. So we're going to start with something quite different. We're going to start with a little sequence Marscape, and that will sequence into the Buzzcocks. <laughs> Part of a track by Marscape, which is actually Jack Lancaster and Robin Lumley. The track was called Take Off. And of course, Jack Lancaster was co-founder of Bloodwind Pig many moons ago. And he was very friendly with Patrick Moore, the astronomer, the eccentric astronomer, who gave him lots of scientific, scientific information. And uh, he and Robin Lumley built a whole album around that information called Marscape. And many of the people who played on the album were also uh, in Brand X, including Phil Collins on drums. It originally came out on RSO 
in 1976. And that was immediately followed, of course, by the Buscocks and my colleague Matt Ingham will fill you in on that track. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, the, it's a brand new Buzzcock song that we just heard called Senses Out of Control. It's taken from a brand new EP of theirs, which is coming out on 10-inch vinyl at the end of April. Um, they've got a tour that starts on the 4th of March as well, goes all across the UK. And this is really a sort of sneak peek at a new album, brand new album from Steve Diggle and his band called uh, Sonics in the Soul, which is coming out probably late summer. But uh, 10 inch vinyl is available from Cherry Red store. It's also available from the band store. And I know they'd, um, they'd probably love to see you down the front at one of their gigs. I'm sure you'll be there, Ian. They're loud, the Buzzcocks. I, la- I last saw them with Pete Shelley playing Oxford maybe four or five years ago. It was very loud and they went right from one song into another. There was virtually no gap. It was quite intense. And then I saw the tribute at the Arbor Hall after yeah. Pete Shelley had, had uh, departed, um, where they had lots of guests, which was, which was moving, but not the same as a real Buzzcocks gig. Mm. So, uh, I think these new Buzzcocks gigs are fantastic, actually. I've, I've seen them live a few times and well worth catching them, definitely. But yeah, we look forward to the new album. Uh, and another artist that uh, we're working with is Toya, she has got a big tour coming up in September, actually, the Anthem Tour, which uh, will have a big Anthem box set coming out around the same time, which is very exciting. There's lots of um, interesting additions to that. But I'm going to play a track called She today, which is taken from our upcoming uh, May release, called, uh, which is the live album Toya, Toya, Toya. This is our th- third reissue I think from in the sort of deluxe series that we're doing it's on CD and coloured vinyl and this is a previously unreleased track so you won't have heard this before this is She
That was she from Toya, and I'm going to pass over to the professor now, who's going to talk about some more tracks. Cheers, Matt. Yeah, I want to chat about uh, a new box set, um, which is the second of our three CD sets on the Strawberry label, devoted to all things mod and related from the 60s. The box set's called I Love to See You Strut, and we're going to play four tracks, which I'll chat about after you've heard them. Live It Up by Dusty Springfield, Baby I Don't Need Your Love by The Chance, The Who's Run Run Run, and Is This the Dream by The Zombies. <laughs> Oh, 
of things we plan to do This thing we got tastes so sweet I can't believe you would destroy the blend Baby, please don't look at me that way Cause I know what you wanna say Dream. 
So you just heard four tracks from our new box set, I Love to See You Strut. I'll chat about those now. So the first one was Live It Up by Dusty Springfield. Dusty, I think, was the best, certainly female interpreter of American soul music, a voice to die for, absolutely glorious vocal style. Uh, that song was written, I think, for her by Leon Huff, later of Gamble and Huff fame, Philadelphia soul legend. And it was part of an EP that she made, uh, recorded in New York. Um, again, much more at the kind of soulful end of her uh, career in 1964. Um, second track, again, very soulful. Uh, the Chants were uh, an all-black group out of Liverpool, um, which was a rarity in the 60s. Uh, that was a single they made in 1968, Baby I Don't Need Your Love, written by um, Eddie Amu from the group. And if that name rings a bell, you may know that the chance eventually evolved into the real thing. You had lots of success at the second second half of the 70s. Third track was Run, 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 opening track from the Who's a Quick One album from the end of 1966. Classic kind of freak beat mod record. And the fourth choice was somewhat overlooked single by the Zombies, Is This the Dream? Which should have been a massive hit, but wasn't. Uh, but it's definitely um, much admired amongst aficionados. Yes, when I played the album, well, it's more than an album, isn't it? The box set through, and I, and I heard that track in Colin Bluntstone's voice. I thought we've got to play that. He's one of my all-time favourite male voices. Colin, just fantastic. So, um, last, the last programme, we played some tracks from a box set called 1979 Revolt Into Style. And John selected three or four tracks, and I've been playing it in the car and there's so many just amazing tracks on there. I thought we would squeeze, no pun intended, you'll find out why I said that in a minute. We'll squeeze three more tracks in. And uh, you've probably guessed, the first track is by Squeeze, Up the Junction, Pretenders Kid, and XTC's Making Plans with Nigel. And here they are. Something missing, I beg 
for some forgiveness But begging's not my business And she won't write a letter Although I always tell her And so it's my assumption I'm really up the junction You 
must be happy, he must be happy in his world. just heard three tracks from our new 1979 box up the junction by squeeze kid by the pretenders and making plans for nigel ian by xtc oh dear never mind i still love the track though brilliant a classic yeah so just to mention that i guess uh yeah i think the interesting thing for the 79 box was how the tracks were both futuristic a lot of them and also went back to the 60s there was definitely a kind of revival element and to squeeze up the, up the junction was inspired by Nell Dunn's book and the film and the, the TV series, TV dramatisation by Ken Loach. Um, Pretenders Kid, um, they were definitely had a sort of 60s retro element to what they were doing, although that was written about a kid who discovers his mum's a prostitute, which again spoke to the kind of books that Nell Dunn was making in the 60s, writing in the 60s. Um, and XTC definitely had that kind of 60s beat music feel to them. Um, so, yeah, three three classics, really, from the 79 box. OK, thanks, John. And now we come to, I suppose, a little bit of a sad section um, of the programme because we're going to play three tracks by people that have have uh, departed recently. Um, seems to be more and more we're, we're losing some great, great people. Um, so let's start with um, Be My Baby by The Ronettes.
That was Be My Baby by the Ronettes. And of course, we lost uh, Ronnie Spector very recently. And I did read a few years ago her um, autobiography. And she had a tough life, but she was a brave woman. And she, she made the most of it. And she lived a life. Some of it was great. And some of it was just very, very difficult. And that song came out in 1963. Ian, I just want to interject with a little anecdote. Um, on a lighter note, we, we, of course, we had lunch recently with Clem Cattini, legendary drummer. Absolutely. The Tornado. But who's played in more number one singles than anybody ever. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly in the, from a UK perspective. And Clem was telling us that one day, uh, Phil Spector, the producer, of course, of the Renettes, um, was clearly impressed by, by Maverick producer Joe Meek and called him um, at his studio. And Clem answered the phone. And who is it? It's Phil Spector. Uh, and went to get Joe, and Joe was in a real mood because he was quite a tempestuous character. Came to the phone, and bef without even listening to Phil Spector, screamed down the phone at him saying, you've ripped off everything I've done, and slammed the phone down so hard it actually broke the phone. And Clem was there and witnessed this firsthand. God, God only knows what Phil, Phil Spector must have thought of Joe Meek at the time. He probably quite admired him, actually, a man yeah. who spoke his well, mind. Yeah, he had a temper on him as well, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. So the second person we've lost recently, of course, is Meatloaf. And um, here's Heaven Can Wait.
that was Heaven Can Wait for Meatloaf. And I was just checking the lyrics of that song, and I'm going to read them out, a part of them anyway. Heaven can wait, and a band of angels wrapped up in my heart will take me through the lonely night, through the cold of the day. And I know, I know, heaven can wait. And all the gods come down here just to sing for me. And the melody is going to make me fly without pain, without fear. And I, ho I really hope he is without pain, without fear. And I played table tennis with him once, Meatloaf, because um, Trey Red used to be uh, above a studio called Marcus Music many years ago. And we were on the top floor and Mute Records were just below us. And it was a recording studio, Marcus, and uh, all kinds of people were in there. And Meatloaf was was uh, in there for a few weeks and he loved he loved primarily to play to, to play table tennis with the girls from the office but I did have a few rounds with him once and he was a, a great did character. You win? It, it was kind of knockabout so oh, it was, okay. wasn't too competitive. Wasn't too, yeah. Could I could I have a could I have a real go with a bat at Meatloaf? I think not. Well, yeah. So he didn't have a bat out of hell then. <laughs> <laughs> very That's good, fun. very good John. And then of course We've also, only two days ago, lost Gary Brooker from Procol Harum, who we all know, knew very well in the office because we've been looking after much of his catalogue the last few years. We've seen him play, we've done an interview with him for Chair Red TV. A lovely man. The thing I think I liked about him, well, one of the things I liked about him most was his dedication to his marriage. He was married 51 years, completely dedicated to his wife and family and a very, very decent and good man. And um, I think you had something to say as well, didn't you, John? But we'll play, we'll play the record first, and we're gonna play... We're gonna play the live version, the hit live version of Conquistador by Procol Harum. <laughs> Some angels hallowed proud You reek of purity I see your armor plated breast Has long since lost a sheep Begins 
was the live hit version of Conquistador by Procol Harum. It had been released previously as a studio track from their first album, I think, in the late 60s, but arguably that was the definitive recording and quite a rare thing to have a live hit single. Uh, and I think it was in the UK and also hit in America at the time. Actually, it reminds me of Peter Frampton's Show Me The Way. That was a I yeah, that's another. We must play that sometime. Absolutely. That's 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 a great that's a great that's a great record. Yeah. And then um, Trey Red via Esoteric has just put out um, a box. Well, it's not really a box set, but I think there's two CDs in here. Feeling free by an artist called Fields, and I'm going to play. First of all, I'll I'll play a track, and then we'll talk about them briefly. I'm going to play while the sun still shines. I climbed on a number 54 Greyhound bus I'll be leaving this town But who's gonna make a fuss I don't know where I'm going My eyes are closed too tight to see But while the sun still shines So try and put my heart on show Cause if I put my hand in theirs When I leave I won't be free But while the sun still shines What else can I be? Kicking up the dust before 
That was When the Sun Still Shines from Fields. And um, the main guy in Fields was Graham Field, who went on to form a band called Rare Bird. I uh, had a big hit with Sympathy. And we did play that, actually, because we, we have a Rare Bird anthology, which we put out um, oh, maybe three months ago. And we played that track. Fields were formed in 1971. And Andrew McCulloch was also in, in Fields, and he had previously been in, in King Crimson. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a very good line-up. They were underrated at the time, but now we are reissuing their catalogue. Let's hope they get some, some recognition. And then uh, before, just before Christmas, Esoteric, one of the Trey Red labels, put out a box set called Taking Some Time On, Underground Sounds of 1970, which was a four CD box set. Some wonderful artists there. And I, and I realised that I was, uh, I'm, I'm on the, the, the board for the Albert Hall and I was sitting next to uh, a guy I've become um, quite friendly with called Robert. And he actually was the drummer in the original version of Gracious, who had a track on that box set. And I thought, I'd better sneak this in. So this is Heaven by Gracious.
brother, help a friend of yours or mine. Do you have a clean mind? Do you have a clean mind? Who made you healthy in your body and your mind? Do you have a clean mind? Will you give some money to the church in time? yourself that you will never be unkind Do you have a clean mind? God will never try and stop you going on to find If you have a clean track called Heaven by Gracious and they were they were around in the early 70s and they reformed in the mid 90s briefly as I said my friend Robert Lipson was the drummer and they had had three albums out um, Gracious and This Is in the early 70s and then Echo in 1996 and we're now going to come to what's probably the highlight of the show and why most of you tuned in which uh, we're bringing in Umi, um, one of the world's Yes experts. Hi Ian, thanks for having me back. Yeah, just about to play another Yes track as usual. Do, do, do you listen to anything apart from Yes at home? Uh, so I've heard other songs before, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're not as good as Yes, but <laughs> <laughs> what is? But uh, yeah, no, I try. I try to be diverse. But, but today I'm going to play Yours Is No Disgrace by Yes, which is the opening song of the Yes album from 1971. Uh, it was written by all five members of the band, at the time, which is uh, it's something I always appreciate with Yes, with them all being such prolific songwriters. Uh, Yours is No Disgrace is generally recognized as Yes's first anti-war song. And John Anderson has stated that the theme of the song was recognition that the kids fighting in the war, which was the Vietnam war, war at the time, had no choice but to fight, and that the war wasn't their fault. So the song is really just as relevant today as it was in 1971. Uh, it's a long one, so I'm not going to talk anymore. I'll play it for you now. This is Yours is No Disgrace by Yes. Mm. 
And it's even more relevant as the war started in U Ukraine today. Yep, so, literally, yeah. yeah, no. yeah. But uh, yeah, no, here's the song. Enjoy it.
Yours is No Disgrace by Yes, and I will pass back to Ian. Okay, thanks, Umi. Um, now, I've been working through um, the Anthony Phillips latest release, which is called Archives 1 and 2. Anthony Phillips is, a, again, a good friend of um, most of us at Cherry Red. He, he was, of course, a founding member of Genesis when he was at school at Charterhouse with Peter Gabriel and Mike Rutherford. And uh, on, this, on this archive collection, there's a track called Pennsylvania Flick House, which actually was a group he had with Mike Rutherford and some others called Anon, which predated Genesis. So um, they made their live debut in 1965, played a gig at the school, and this track was actually recorded in 1966. So here's Pennsylvania Flick House by Anon. <laughs>
was Anon, who predated uh, Genesis. That was Anthony Phillips and Mike Rutherford, recorded in 1966. And it's on Anthony Phillips's new box set, Archives Collection, Volume 1 and 2. And as always, I like to scour different things and play some non trailer related tracks. And um, I found a couple that I really liked recently. I'm going to play the first one, Sam Lee, and it's featuring Elizabeth Fraser, of course, from the Cocteau Twins. And it's The Moon Shines Bright. The moon shines bright and the stars give a light In a little while it will be day The voice of love It calls upon our soul and bids us awake and pray Arise, arise, away thee rise For life she is calling thee For it might be the mothering of your sweet soul if you open your eyes and see That the life of a man It comes with little plan It flourishes like a flower As tender in the heart Into which you're born So cherish your every hour The Moon Shines Bright by Sam Lee, featuring Elizabeth Fraser. And I think that's on the Cooking Vinyl label. Um, I didn't know much about Sam Lee, but I looked him up and he, uh, he uh, 
like specialising in traditional music, uh, Irish, uh, Irish and British traditional music, uh, particularly from the, the Romani Gypsy and Irish travelling com uh, communities. And he spent a lot of time collecting songs from these communities. And uh, he's, he's uh, reworked m many of these traditional songs. And uh, I'm going to explore some more of his albums because I've only heard a few tracks so far. So the track is actually from his uh, third album, Old Wow. And it's coming out the end of January. It's actually it's out by now. It's produced by Bernard Butler, of course. Makes it, uh, makes it interesting as well. And uh, Sam sees the track as a gentle yet potent wake-up call to recognise the beauty of life in its purest form, which we must all remember at times. In fact, all the time. And um, another track I found, which I really, really like, called Anais Mitchell, called Bright Star. And uh, the professor has just told me that's a very clever link, going from the moon shines bright the bright star but I didn't realize that so um, it's not actually intentional so here's bright star by Anias Mitchell Mitchell and that's taken from her eighth studio album which is just called Anais Mitchell and I did play a track a few months ago where she was the vocalist by an act called Bonnie Light Horseman who at the time I just thought was brilliant as well. Now the SFE label which is part of Cherry Red has a new album out by Wolfgang Fleur called Magazine One and it's uh, it's interesting it's it's nine tracks 
and every track has a different guest vocalist. Wolfgang, of course, was um, played percussion in uh, Kraftwerk from 1973 to 1987, and then he released a solo album in 2015 called Eloquence, which we, we released by, by Cherry Red. And I'm going to play two tracks from this new album. Um, first one called Daz Beat, which features Midge Ewer from um, Slick and then uh, Ultravox, and now obviously a solo artist. And Birmingham, who, uh, which features Claudia Bruken and Peter Hook. So here goes. Berlin to London City, USA, where the girls are pretty. Beats in Moscow, beats in France. Dancing is a given to the synthesizer rhythm. Beat dictates our daily structure. Seconds draw.
iron into steel sounds like battle. This is the birth of heavy metal. tracks from Wolfgang Fleur's new album, Das Beat with Midge Ewer and Birmingham with Claudia Bruken and Peter Hook. And coincidentally, Philip Lipson, who I talked about earlier, I was sitting next to at the Albert Hall meeting this morning, his brother is a producer called Stephen Lipson, who is this very moment is doing a new album with Propaganda, which of course uh, Claudia was and still is I found a member of, and she's got such a lovely voice. Now, that is enough of me in this show, so I'm going to pass over to the very learned professor to talk about the John Carter story. Thank you, Ian. Yes, we were recently very um, very pleased to pick up rights to the Peer Music catalogue. Um, Peer Music, back in the 60s, uh, were their main publishing wing was Southern Music, and they had their own studio and uh, used to create, um, well, they had their own records that came out and their own productions. And one of the key uh, backroom boys uh, within the peer music setup or the Southern music setup was a guy called John Carter. And John was one of the early purveyors of what you might call studio pop. Intelligent people who worked behind the scenes. They weren't primarily giggy musicians. They were songwriters and performers. And John was, I think, from an early age, smitten by the American harmony pop sound of the Beach Boys and, and, and others, the Four Seasons. And mu- many of his records under myriad guises have had a very similar feel, harmony-based, very melodic, occasionally a bit psychedelic. So we've just put, we're putting out this new compilation, My World Fell Down, um, on the Grapefruit label to celebrate the fact we've picked up this catalogue. And we're going to play three tracks from this new anthology. My World Fell Down, the title track by the Ivy League, uh, A Walk in the Sky by the Flower Pot Men, and White Collar Worker by Ministry of Sound. <laughs>
you just heard three tracks from the new John Carter anthology, uh, My World Fell Down by the Ivy League, uh, later an American hit for a band called Sagittarius, A Walk in the Sky by the Flowerpot Men, a uh, fantastic track. Uh, they, of course, had a big hit with Let's uh, Go to San Francisco. And White Collar Worker, an obscure single by Ministry of Sound, very popular amongst collectors of modern freak beat sounds in the mid-60s. And now I'm going to hand over to Matt to chat about Spirit. Thanks, John. Yeah, we've been working with Spirit or certainly with the sort of estate of Randy California and the guy um, who's archiving all of Randy and Spirit's back catalogue for a while now. But I was really pleased to see that we were doing the 12 Dreams of Dr. Sardonicus album, which was a, an album I've loved for a long time, even before I worked at Cherry Red. I was a big fan of it. It's hard to pick a favourite song from that album. We've done a two-CD expanded version. It's out now. It's fantastic. It's really well worth picking up. So this is Nature's Way by Spirit. <laughs> Spirit, Nature's Way, off the 12 Dreams of Dr. Sardonicus album. And uh, yeah, Spirit were a band that I knew very well before I started Cherry Red, but one artist I didn't know was a chap called Michael Weston King. We are doing his new album, which is called The Struggle. It's out the 1st of March. Um, and it's a great album, actually. It's very singer songwriter It sort of reminds me of early Van Morrison, um, and it's very rooted in the sort of early late 60s, early 70s music. So this is the title track of the album. It's called Weight of the World. I put a cross beside the knee I thought that it would be a change for The boys down at the station all convinced me Though I never really understood But I saw them on the news the other night And I clearly understand that it's not right 
to hold a man down while he begs for his life. It's not the weight of the world on our shoulders, it's the weight of a man. For years I've patrolled these streets Still I marvel at the lights on Broadway But tonight it's dark, tonight it's quiet There's no one here to get out of my way Now I'm looking to the man who got my vote Why do decency and love stick in his throat? Who sends soldiers to the streets? Not messengers of hope. It's not the weight of the world on our shoulders. It's the weight of a man that keeps us down. It's not the weight of the world on our shoulders. It's the weight of a man St. John and I will stand there right beside of you but you won't know my name or even care while you hold somebody's Bible in the air I'll be just another number no longer acting dumb Searching for salvation with a thousand yard stare. It's not the weight of the world on our shoulders, it's the weight of a man that keeps us down. It's not the weight of the world on our shoulders, it's the weight of a man. That was Way to the World by Michael Weston King. It wasn't the title track of the album. The album's called The Struggle. It was the opening track of the album. And actually, I wanted to play another track called Sugar, but um, I'm not allowing myself because we've got a premiere coming from that in the next few weeks. So, yeah. The premiere of that track, Sugar, is with a big website called Americana UK, which is actually a very good way of describing the album. And uh, I think for the last track, I'm passing over to John. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, do check out Michael Weston King's new record. He's a, he's a good friend of mine, uh, lives in Manchester, as do I. Uh, we're going to wrap up with our regular cover version. We represent the rights to uh, John Abbey's uh, Contempo label, which was basically British soul productions from the 1970s. And one of the, one of the best records on the label is by a lady named Doris Duke. Uh, who already had a, a very good pedigree when she came over to the UK and recorded with, with John Abbey's team. A uh, track we're going to play from her album is a cover of Marlena Shaw's Woman of the Ghetto. <laughs>
That was a tremendous gutsy version of Marlena Shaw's Woman of the Ghetto by Doris Duke. And uh, yeah, that wraps up another episode of Cherry Radio. Uh, Thank you for listening and tune in next month.